Hey guys, it has been a minute since I've made a video. Frankly, nothing really is new. There hasn't been much to share with you, but there are starting to be some developments in my wardrobe, so today I wanna to share those with you. Now, as many of you will know, for the last two years, I've had 50 items of clothing or fewer. And today, at this exact moment, I have 30 pieces of clothing, which includes everything you see here, what I'm wearing, three sweaters up there, and five pieces of outerwear that live in my front closet. We're not messing with those today, so they're gonna stay where they are. But I have 30 items of clothing, and it's really been working out for me. I don't imagine myself owning much more than that for the foreseeable future, but lately it's been a little bit of a challenge because some of my pieces are starting to show significant wear. Now, I've been asked before how long my clothes last, and the answer is it depends. Everything is a variable. It depends on the quality of the piece, the material it's made out of, what you, how often you wear it, what you're doing when you wear it, how you store it, how you care for it. So everything is a variable, but the majority of the pieces in my wardrobe today I've owned for years. And some pieces, like my beloved Target shirts, I've owned for five or six years. So if you take care of your clothes, they can last a long time, but really there are a number of factors at play. Still with all the care in the world, if you wear something a lot, if you wear something frequently, then it's going to wear out. And all of a sudden it feels like a lot of my items are starting to bite the dust. Now to be fair, this kind of started happening at the end of last winter. At the end of winter, several of my sweaters had just reached the end of their life. I have a lot of wool and cashmere sweaters, or I had a lot of wool and cashmere sweaters, and I was looking this up just a moment ago. Whenever wool touches water, the fibers curl up on themselves and they never really stretch back out. So I was starting to have a little bit of a deficit in the sweater department at the end of last winter, and now it seems like several other of my pieces are starting to follow suit. So let's start. Um, this guy, this was sort of sacrificed to some foster kittens that we kept a little while ago. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but they made biscuits all over the shirt. And so it pulled a lot of the threads. And now I just really don't feel comfortable wearing this out of the house. This is not me looking my best whenever the fabric has been sort of destroyed like this. Um, the shirt is fine. This tank top I've had for I think a couple of years, but it's a black sleeveless tank top and so the armpit area has that infamous deodorant lightening and I have done lots to try to get that out and it won't come out no matter what I do. This shirt is fine. This is really hard to say, but my beloved Target boat neck three quarter shirts, they technically make another version of it today, but it's not at all the same. They've changed the material, the fit of it is different. So I have these shirts plus the one I'm wearing now, and these two are just showing too much wear for me to feel good in anymore. This shirt, I have oxy cleaned the crap out of it, but the armpit area has this sweat stain yellowing on it that I can't get out. And this black shirt as well has that underarm deodorant lightening. This shirt is actually holding up the best of the three, but it too is showing some signs of wear, especially around the seams where the fabric sort of folds up on itself and that's where it gets rubbed. And so the color is starting to fade quite a bit. We're going into fall. And so I think I'm going to hang on to this one for a little while longer, but these guys I no longer feel good in. My white shirts are doing just fine. Star shirt, doing just fine. These guys are holding up fine, but I have two versions, a green and a black version of the exact same shirt. I've had them for a while, and I reach for the black version a lot, but this guy, I just don't reach for as often. It's a little bit of a difficult color to pair with other things. It plays best with black and doesn't really work with denim. Um, so it's not as versatile as the black version, and I just don't reach for this too often. Moving into shorts and pants, everything is really holding up fine on the pant front, except for this pair of black jeans. I've complained about these before, I feel like in a couple of different videos. They started out black, but now they are gray. They have not retained their color really at all. And as a gray pant, it doesn't work in my wardrobe the way I want it to function. So I never reach for these. And then of the shorts I have, I get the most use out of my denim shorts. Not really a surprise, they're very versatile. But the white and the taupe shorts, I don't reach for nearly as often. The white ones are 
fun to have. They're a nice option in the summer, but realistically, I don't get the same kind of mileage out of either of these two pairs of shorts. And then sweaters, I don't think you can see them right now. So up here, I have three sweaters left over from last year. And I think the last time I made a video and showed my sweaters, I didn't include the green one. I had tucked it away because this green sweater is actually my favorite sweater. And I thought to myself, I need to buy new sweaters come next fall, but this is my favorite green sweater. If I can't find another sweater like it, I want to hold on to it. But I think I was confused and thought it had shrunken less than it actually had. And I wore this the other week. I had to stretch it out, pull it in so many directions. It really isn't working anymore for me to feel comfortable wearing. And my navy sweater as well. This is a cashmere sweater from Everlane. It's actually the only thing I own from Everlane. And I think I, again, sort of confused myself and thought that it had stood up better than it had, but it is so incredibly shrunken. I don't know if you can see on camera, but no amount of tugging is making this comfortable for me to wear anymore. So really I only have one viable sweater, which is this white V-neck sweater that I've had for years. It's not a great material um, and it is starting to show some signs of wear, but compared to the other two, it hasn't shrunken. So I'm going to hang on to the white sweater, but these two sweaters, the green and the navy, have to sadly go. And then these items as well, the striped tank top, the black tank top, the green shirt, and the no longer black pants are also going to go. And these four items, I'm going to hang on to the red shirt. As I said, we're going into fall, but these four items I'm going to put in trial separation. So I'm going to move these back to the side of my closet where I hang my pajamas and I'm going to attempt to not wear them. But in the meantime, while I'm shopping, if I do need to reach for those pieces, they're there. I might hold on to the shorts for a while. We're now going into fall and it's not summertime anymore. But if after a while I decide really I don't need those, I don't get enough wear out of them, then I will let them go. So that really doesn't leave me with a ton of options that haven't worn themselves out or haven't been worn out and that I feel comfortable in. So you would think the logical next step is to go shopping to find some replacements, which sounds easy enough, right? Now I've spoken before, since I wear basics, I love wearing basic pieces. And since I have a small wardrobe, it's really easy to get away with wearing basic pieces on a heavier rotation than pieces that are maybe super loud colors or loud patterns and bright. So nobody really notices if you wear basics on a heavy rotation, and that is one of the many reasons I love them. Another reason I love them is that typically you can find the same basic pieces carried by retailers year over year. And so I thought, great, my sweaters have worn out. I will just go to Banana Republic and buy replacement sweaters of my favorite sweater that they always carry, right? Not this year. So this year they carry the exact same sweater or kind of, it's the same material. They come in the same colors. I was really excited when I saw them online. However, this year they decided to change it up a little bit. And instead of a traditional sleeve, they have raglan sleeves. Now I have nothing against a raglan sleeve on other people, but on me, it just doesn't look good. And it also makes the garment a little more casual, which is not the look I'm going for. Something this experience is reminding me of is the value of having a really specific shopping list. So with the case of the sweaters, I knew exactly the color, cut, material, the types of sleeves, the types of neckline that I wanted, but unfortunately I wasn't able to find it through the traditional retailers that I go to. And I will say that having a very specific shopping list, it doesn't make shopping easy per se, but it makes it really direct. If you know very specifically what it is that you're looking for, then it makes it easy to weed out everything that doesn't qualify, that doesn't meet that criteria, and just focus in on exactly what you want. Now, I consider myself to be something of an expert shopper at this point. I use websites like ShopStyle. If you've never used ShopStyle before, I really recommend it. It's a online retail aggregator, so they pull in results from shops like Macy's and Nordstrom, 
They don't aggregate from absolutely everywhere, so it's not truly a one-stop shop, but between shop style and a normal Google shopping results page, I can typically determine whether or not retailers are carrying the types of items that I want, at least sort of more mainstream traditional retailers, which unfortunately tend to be the only ones that stock petite items. So I haven't had luck, obviously, finding replacements for a lot of pieces. So instead, I'm kind of using this moment as a, a time to pause and reflect on what it is I think I want in my wardrobe and experiment with what I already own. And I think those two practices are really intertwined. Like if you think you want something, you don't truly know if that's going to pan out for your life and your lifestyle until you put it to the test and actually try it. So we're moving into winter. Winter is one of my favorite seasons for dressing. It's when I can wear my white shirts and my blazers, which is kind of my signature look. I wish I could wear it all year round, but in the summer I want as little clothing touching me as possible. So winter is my favorite time to dress. And so I am just now starting out uh, to wear my white shirts and my blazers again, but I think it's a good moment to sort of double check and make sure that's still the look that I'm going for. And I actually have learned a few things about breathability of materials and fit, and I'm glad that I've experimented with what I have. I'm not getting rid of any of my blazers, for example, but now I think I have a stronger sense of what I want to incorporate into my wardrobe moving forward. Another way that I'm experimenting and planning my wardrobe right now is through mood boards. Now, I posted a few screenshots of some mood boards that I made to Instagram the other day, and some of you asked how I made my mood boards, and the answer is Photoshop and Illustrator. So just because I can't find the exact same pieces that I want sold by a retailer right now doesn't mean the internet doesn't have tons of images of items that are similar to what I want. So I peruse the internet for photos of pieces of clothing, I import them into Photoshop, I remove the background, I export it as a PNG, I dump that PNG into Illustrator, and that's where I play around and make my mood boards. Now, if you don't want to shell out the money for Photoshop or Illustrator, I totally understand, and there is an alternative. I've used an app in the past called Stylebook. I just checked and it's available from the Apple App Store for $3.99, so it's a small price to pay. Sorry, Android users, I don't think it's available for Android, but you can always look, and I'm sure there's an equivalent product out there. But with Stylebook, you're meant to take a photo of an item of clothing that you have, and then it can do its best to automatically remove the background, or you can sort of go in and manually erase all around the image to get rid of the background. I bought and used Stylebook a while ago, but I ended up deleting it from my phone because I couldn't organize things exactly the way I wanted to, and erasing the background was really tedious, but they may have improved that feature since I first used it, and I can always take my background removed images from Photoshop and just dump those straight into Stylebook as well. So I've re-downloaded it onto my phone and I plan on giving that another go soon. And it also has tons of other cool features, like you can put together outfits and plan out your entire week or month in the outfits that you want to wear. You can plan for trips. And I haven't used the app myself enough to have actually done this, but I've read that they actually also provide analytics on your wardrobe so you can sort of see statistically what items you wear the most. And I think that can give you some really good insights into how you're using your wardrobe. All right, I think that's everything I have to share with you today. Apologies if you were hoping to see a bunch of new items or really any new items. Believe me, I wish I were having better luck finding replacements. Actually, I have an online order that should be here in the next week or so, so hopefully that won't be too far off. In the meantime, I just wanted to show that sometimes this is what intentional shopping and maintaining a small wardrobe looks like. It's very slow and intentional sometimes, but I think that's better than the alternative of hastily buying a bunch of things that aren't going to work for you and your wardrobe in the long term. So if you're out there experiencing the same thing, know that you are not alone, and there are different things that you can do to experiment with your wardrobe in the meantime. That's gonna be it for me today. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.